This is everything we brought with us on our trek to Everest Base Camp. Okay, welcome to our packing video. Now, we're gonna preface this video with the fact that this is not necessarily the how-to video that you're maybe looking for. We're gonna treat this with a little bit of a different approach, being that we also made a lot of mistakes. So I want you to take this video with a grain of salt and use it as an opportunity to take some things away from what we did, but also just learn from what we didn't do. More of a what not to do video. <laughs> yes. We're also gonna throw in some fun confessions with um, things that we did on the trail that maybe weren't the most ideal, but I think they'll be fun for you guys to hear about and make hopefully make this video a little bit more interesting. Okay, we're gonna start by showing you generally how we carried our stuff. And like I said, we're gonna do this video a little bit differently. We're not going to show you every single thing. We're gonna put a list out with this video that has every single thing. So if you're interested in that, just look at the link below and you can look at that. But we're just gonna show you some of our favorite things, some of our not favorite things, starting with how we carried our stuff. So, Meg, you wanna hold up? So this is how I carried my stuff. This is a dry pack, which is definitely not the most ideal backpack, but it works well because we were traveling before this. I would definitely recommend something a little bit more um, hiking, something more in the hiking category than this, but uh, this worked fine for me. Same. This is like a multi-weather, just like traditional backpack. There is one clip that helps, but not necessarily for trekking, but it was fine. And then keep in mind, we did have a porter and this is November. And our porter carried uh, a duffel bag, which looks like this. So our porter carried this, which also had a sleeping bag uh, two sleeping bags and two d big down jackets that our uh, guiding company provided for us. Plus, we put some extra clothes in here that we didn't want to carry because, you know, it gets kind of heavy. But we also carried this with us. Okay, we are going to start off by sharing the, our favorite thing we brought with us, okay? Mine is pretty simple. It was a stocking cap. I literally wore this every day. One, because I was cold, but two, because my hair got so disgusting that I just had to have something over the top of my head. I also slept in this every night, and I basically didn't take it off for 12 days. Okay, for me, my favorite thing was, I don't wanna put these on the bed, oh, too late. Um, <laughs> My favorite thing was my hiking boots by far. Uh, these I've had these things for like four years. They're the Salomon X Pro something. I'll make sure to link them below. But these work great for me. Having a great pair of hiking shoes is key on the trail. I will say though, I mentioned this, I think one of them in the videos from Everspace Camp, that people had on like these really big and bulky hiking boots. I really don't think that's necessary. You just need something that has a sturdy bottom because of the rocky terrain and you should be good to go. Um, but hiking boots are key being that you're gonna be wearing them for 12 to 14 days straight and these worked out great for me. They smell like poop. Confession number one, on day three, I cried because I was overwhelmed with the altitude and the whole experience. All right, next, what we could have brought more of. For me, that was hiking pants. I only brought two pair of hiking pants and these puppies are so ripe. And I, I wish I would have brought more pair, maybe like four pair. You wear these like every day, especially in November. These are my favorite pair. These are Fial Ravens, they're really lightweight. Um, but in general, I would have brought more hiking pants. Okay. For me, I would have brought more socks and underwear. Now, some of this was limited because we were traveling before this and had ability to do laundry whenever we wanted, but I brought one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of socks, which sounds like it might be enough for 12 days. But let me tell you, I think I also brought the same number of underwear, which is not enough for 12 days. <laughs> so, yeah, I wish I would have gotten a little heavier on the socks and underwear. Confession two, neither of us showered for 14 days, even though the trek was 12. All right, next, something that we brought that we never used. Now, I didn't think this was 
dumb to bring, but I brought three t-shirts. I did not wear a t-shirt once because I was always in two to three long sleeves because of how chilly it was. So the fact that I thought a t-shirt was gonna be enough or provide any sort of warmth, I'm not sure. But like sleeping, I didn't even sleep in less than at least two long sleeves, so unnecessary. For me, I never used these puppies, sandals. Now, like as Meg said with her t-shirts, it maybe sounds like a good idea and sandals did sound like a good idea, but just with the time of year that we went in November, it was just far too cold to bring sandals. People, I did see people wearing sandals. Our guide would wear sandals without socks, which is mind blowing to me. Look at this, look at that. <laughs> it's 35 degrees out here. But for, for me, I just didn't use these. So if you're planning to go to Everest Base Camp in November, you probably don't need sandals, even though it sounds like a good idea. But you might if you're in the summer or something like that. Confession three, we both re-wore underwear a few times. One thing that we used way more than we thought that we would, and that is a buff. Oh yeah. This thing is now disgusting because it was a snot rag, a neck warmer, an ear warmer, and just on our bodies for 12 days straight. It really was. Like, we never took this thing off. It, we could probably also add this to the category of things that we should have brought more of yeah. because these things are pretty nasty now. But honestly, these things never came off us. The trail's dusty. You're just going to want something to keep your face warm. Um, keep your nose warm, keep your ears warm, and things like that. Even keep you out of the sun, because it gets kind of yeah. harsh like when you're up there in the altitude. There are a ton of these available on the trail. So if you yeah. forgot it, basically every town you walk through, you can see them hanging from a window. Yeah, and that's just a good point as well. If you forget anything, I'll link a little clip in here right now. What's really nice about the Everest Base Camp Trek is literally if you forget anything, maybe you planned wrong, plan poorly you forget maybe even a deck of cards at any point in the trek you can find whatever you're looking for especially we're in Namche <laughs> Bazaar right now and there's stuff look at these streets there's stuff everywhere so you can probably find what you're looking for yeah so not to stress too much if you do forget something confession number four I will admit that there was a few occasions I threw my toilet paper in the toilet when I was not supposed to Okay, so probably the more ridiculous things I brought were personal like hygiene or care items like a razor and perfume. I've been hiking before. I don't know why I thought that I was gonna use those items. I think maybe because when I usually hike it's for a short period of time, so I'm like, oh, it's fine. But it's the same just across 12 days. So definitely never shaved my legs, definitely never sprayed any perfume. For me, the most ridiculous thing I brought was shorts. And not just one pair of shorts, I bought three pair of shorts. That's more shorts than I brought pants, which we found out is ridiculous. These things never saw the light of day. And in November, unless you like never get cold in your, on your legs, you're probably never gonna wear shorts. So for me, that was the most ridiculous thing that I brought. Confession number five, I can count on one hand how many times Ian and I washed our hands across 12 days. Nothing a little hand sandy can't fix. Okay, so bonus item. One thing that I brought that we used that I would highly recommend bringing is all reliable. Tums here. I forgot to take a Tums before I brush my teeth. It's okay, I'm disgusting enough at this point. You're in a different country eating food you've never eaten before. There is no reason to try to hike with a stomach ache. We were both fine and we really enjoyed the food, but we still took Tums every night before we went to bed, just in case. All right, my bonus item, a little pro tip for you, especially if you're somebody that is going to be bringing a lot of electronics, even at a minimum, a phone. Okay, getting yourself a battery pack. This one's an anchor battery pack. I get like four or five full phone charges out of this, which believe it or not, on the Everest Base Camp Trail will actually save you a ton of money. I mentioned this in our other videos, but as you get further and further up the mountain, they will charge you four to five US dollars to charge your phone to a full charge. So if you can pick up one of these before you go, you could save yourself quite a bit of money. And it's just nice to have in your back pocket, just in case you need it or you're running low on battery one day. 
All right, that is it for our packing video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you learn from what we did and don't necessarily do exactly what we did and then you will be super prepared for your Everest Base Camp trek. Hopefully you found a little humor in our confessional as well. Please don't judge us. We're just trying to show what real life is like when you're hiking for that extended period of time. Yeah, and let's be honest, it's not always super pretty, but it is totally worth it. If you are looking for a full list of what we would recommend you pack for the Everest Base Camp Trek, that is going to be linked below, so make sure you check that out. And thanks for watching this video, and thanks for watching our Everest Base Camp series. Yay! Hopefully you guys enjoyed. We will see you in the next adventure. Join us in our next video as we head to snowy northern Minnesota and enjoy some time off the grid in a pretty unique accommodation. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the Minnesota winter fun.